Hi everybody, this is Darcy with Scrappy Camper Sisters and we are broadcasting today. We broadcast one Saturday a month. Usually it's the first Saturday of the month, but it was my turn to broadcast and I was at my mom's last weekend for her birthday. So, so we're doing our project and I actually really had high hopes that we would be able to do this and it was just too much because it was such a short trip. So we're going to do it today. So thank you so much for joining us. Jonna has a yard sale going on, and so she is going to be watching, but she is going to, um, she won't be on the phone for about an hour. So it'll be a total free for all on my end. <laughs> um, and uh, she's going to, um, she'll pop in and we'll chat and, you know, do our usual thing. So just want to say hi to everybody. And if you're going to be watching this on Ustream, on, um, I'm sorry, on YouTube, just know that I am talking to all my lovely friends who are here in the live chat on Ustream. So that's what's going on. I did want to do one little quick show and tell. I got, and I've been getting beautiful cards from our dear friend, the happy Diane. And so I got another card from her and this is the one she sent me. Isn't that beautiful? And she sent it just because, because she loves me. I just think it's so, so pretty. And this thing's metal, which, you know, I love metal. Put metal on everything. So I wanted to show that because, oh, and it flips up. Aw. Aw. That's sweet. So it says, the more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. So true. We're having a beautiful day in Atlanta. I wish I could have the windows open, but it's so noisy here in the city that I don't want to, um, I don't want to do that, but oh, it's just a gorgeous day today. So isn't that pretty? Love it. Love you card makers. So let me show you what we're doing today. We are making, and I've been wanting to do this for a while. And then I thought, okay, we've got a good reason to do it, but we're going to be altering a vintage glove. And we're just really going to Prima it up. You guys know, well, some of you know how much I love Prima. And I am not necessarily, like, I get my shabby chic on every once in a while. I just love it. To me, it's just fun, you know? Put a bunch of flowers on it and call it done. And, and um, I love their stuff. So we're going to be doing this. And this is not all. We are making a mini album, which was designed to go inside the glove. However, this one doesn't fit because I made it too puffy. So I'm going to make it a little less puffy today. But what I wanted to do was make a miniature Victorian album. So I got some, this is velveteen. It was on a dress that I got in a thrift store and I covered the, the album. So ours today probably isn't going to be as puffy, but at least it'll fit in the glove. And then I used Tim Holtz, his little metal frames. And the cool thing is two come in the pack. So I could do this one and then I can make one today. And then I also used the Prima Butterfly Collection, which I'll show you, and his mini, I believe these are called cabinet cards, right? His mini cabinet cards. So it looks just like a little mini you know, Victorian album, except it's got cool Prima in it. And tags, plenty of room for journaling. As you can see, I didn't decorate a whole lot. Little tag. And then that's it. I, I have to say, okay, this is so bad because I really love this. Like, I love this book. <laughs> I'm like giddy with happiness. Although I did get glue all over this one. So we're, we're going to work on that today, but uh, if anybody knows any tricks to get glue off velveteen, I think it comes off with water. I don't know. So that's what we're doing. Isn't that fun? I know. It's a little bit of a departure, but the gloves are 50s. And I just thought it was kind of soft and romantic and pretty. So you could use this really for anything. You could do, I'm doing one uh, because I had, you know, my mom's birthday last weekend. So I got some quotes about moms and I only have like three pictures. So this is perfect because it doesn't have a whole lot of room in it. So I'm going to be making one for her for her birthday to commemorate her birthday. 
And then, um, but you could do like a prom, a wedding, an engagement, you know, anything like that, which would be darling. They could put it on a display. That's kind of the idea, just to be able to display it. Okay, so let's get started. And if I, uh, we'll see how, we'll see how I do. Like I said, I'm a little tired, but um, I think it's, it's so much fun. I'm having such a good time with it. Okay, so what we're going to do too is, let me show you the paper. A lot of people have been using Prima Butterfly lately, and I'm telling you, it's Jody Lee. She's such a lovely girl, lovely, lovely person. Met her a few times, and the paper is amazing in person. Amazing. The colors are very soft, so sometimes you don't get the full kind of picture when you're seeing it on a stream or video they're absolutely beautiful. And one of the cool things that Prima has done with their A4 paper pads, at least this line, and I don't know about all of them. I usually get the A4 because I don't do 12 by 12. I do mini albums and I do eight by eight layouts. So I usually get the A4. Sometimes I get six by six, sometimes I get both. And what they did this time was, and I got some scraps in the front. They did double-sided and usually the A4s were used to be single-sided, so double-sided. Look at this. Look at these teacups. Is it darling? Oh, John is in the chat. Yay! Yeah, John, just to let you know, John assigns in as me when I'm streaming. So John is Darcy Glam. <laughs> so don't blame me. She writes something <laughs> bratty. <gasps> no, I'm usually the brat. So she'll attest to that too. So they're double-sided. And the other cool thing about this pad was there didn't seem to be a lot of designs because there are several copies of the same one, which I just love. It looks like there's four or five. I don't know how many, I didn't even count. One, two, three, four, five. There's five because I already cut one of these up. So the beauty of that is not only can you get a ton of cards and things done out of this that bitch, but you can, I'm, I'm like, I can make a ton of these from this one stack because there's so many copies of the same page. So that's going to be pretty cool. So it's Prima Butterfly. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And then I got... Just to show you what I've got, I got the stamp set, which has been really fun. Let me hold it up. It's not really sticking to the plastic because I've been using it, but this is the stamp set. Meow. For Prima Butterfly. Pretty. And then I have a bunch of Prima flowers over here that we're going to use. It's Prima Day. So I've got these little ones with the pearls. And these are all, this is the butterfly line. So, I mean, even if you don't know the name or the number or whatever, because, you know, they always use that. But on these, it says Jody Lee Prima Butterfly on the back. You can just buy them as part of the line. This one, I love these. These have lace and paper and then a sparkly kind of resin thing in the middle. And then these I just pulled out, which aren't part of the line, but they're gold. And I thought they would look good because this um, velvet has gold thread in it, gold embroidery thread. Just kind of tied all together. Then they also have Just Say It in crystals, which are like little resin pieces. I didn't really find a use for these, but I will for other things with this line. So I got them. So that's that. And then there were some bigger flowers and butterflies that I got that also went with this line. I'm trying to see it. Oh, did you Nick guys? Hmm. I was going to say, did you guys know you could clean? Um, it says just clean your stamps with an alcohol-free baby wipe. Hmm. That's what I happen to use. What a coincidence. Okay. So the other thing we're going to do today that we're going to use is... Let me just get some of my scraps out of the way here. Is um, this Thermoweb deco foil? And 
I've been using it like crazy. So it's this stuff here. This is the rose gold. I thought the rose gold would be pretty because it's kind of vintagey looking. And it comes, you can get the glue. This comes in a ton of colors. We played with this at CHA and really had a blast. So I wanted to use it on something. And I thought, how perfect to do with these albums that have, you know, the gold kind of ink on them. So these are all the colors that it comes in. Pretty, huh? And it's, um, it's not as thin as like gold leaf or anything, but it's thin, but it's, it's sturdy because I've been really using this a lot. So one of the things I did was I started taking some of the Prima stamps. We're going to do a couple. You have to wait for it to uh, dry. And it says wait at least 30 minutes. I found waiting later was longer was better. But like I stamped the little bottle from the, I have a feather sitting around here too, somewhere. And they're cool. It's flat. It's not really like embossing. It's more like a foil sticker. That's what it looks like, a foil sticker. Really pretty. And then I took a Martha Stewart punch because I thought, ooh, I wonder if I can get the look of German scrap. If I do like this and then I put the deco foil on it and I put it through an embossing folder. So it's pretty and sparkly too. Isn't that cool? So we'll make, we'll do a couple of those and I'll show you how it works. I have one of my, here's one that I did. I'll show you a couple of them. Because you have to wait, I did some of this ahead. But like you can do patterns or in this case on these frames, I just did little dots. See? And they're just sparkly and pretty. And then, so this one, I already put some of the stuff on and let it dry. So we'll do this one, I'll show you how to do it. So what you do, and this is the part I keep forgetting, is you put this foil so that the color's facing up. And you can see how much you can get out of a sheet. There's two sheets in that container. And I didn't cut mine up because I knew I was doing trim and that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to use it this way. It's very sticky. So you're going to pop it down, find a spot. And I'll show you how I did my stamps. I just did a little bow. And you just pull it up. And then I also did some dots in the corner. And you can feel it under there. It's really fun. I have to say, really, really fun. It's great for card makers. It's great for really anybody. I'm having a blast. Layouts. You actually can get a lot in one sheet. You hear Gabby down there? What are you doing, baby? Okay. So I just did like little decorative dots and a bow. I don't know if you can't really see it sparkle. Oh, I guess you can. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that fun? I think it's kind of awesome. Oh, Vicki, you do? You have some? Yeah, I don't know that it's this brand new thing, but they've certainly made it foolproof because I could do it. <laughs> so I found it to be really kind of dummy proof. Love it. So that was really fun. And then I'll just show you what I did, just so you know. I don't know how much of this will really. And I did this feather, and now it's gone. I can't find my feather decal. But what might be fun is we'll just do some of these. And then maybe at the end of the show, it'll be dry enough. And, you know, then we can put the gold on them. Pretty cool. Let me grab my glue. 
And I, you know what? I did not read, this is so funny because so typical. I did not read the instructions, but this is what happens if you don't let it dry, okay? It blobs, you get blobs. So let it dry. And if you do let it dry, now this one, now you'll see when I put the glue on the paper, if you stick it down and you don't pull that stamp up right away, it'll pull some of the paper with it. It's very sticky. So you gotta put it down and pick it right up. And then this one, now this stamp's a little um, delicate, so it's probably not the best use of, of this foil, but that's what it's supposed to look like. It's a little faint, and I apologize for that. But she's pretty. So we'll use this side because this is more neutral. And what I do, and if anybody has any tips, love to hear it. This is what I did. I just took a makeup sponge and I, I put this on and then I sort of smoothed it out, you know, kind of like what you would do with a credit card, make it like frosting, just smooth it. Because if you get it too thick, it blobs. And if you get it too thin, it won't cover the stamp. So like I said, any tips? I'm all ears. So I'm kind of getting it really flat on there. And then I'm just putting it on the stamp. I'm going to look and just see if I got it. And then you pop it down, stick it down, pull it right back up. The only part that's kind of funny about this is that all you can see it, you can see it, uh, but you know you gotta look for it because it, it's clear. And I do need to do more than one. You know, then I have to do a new coat for each one. What am I doing? Flatten it out. Flatten it out. Um, it might take a little practice, I, you know, it might take a little practice. I, I had somewhere I had not enough or too much, just trying to figure out how it all works, you know. And I found swiping it like this worked better than patting it, because you can wipe that right off. So... that one. So let's do the feather. My feather came out really pretty. I wish I could show it to you. <laughs> it's here somewhere. Get it on there. Swipe it on gently. I'm doing this gently. And it, it wipes right off the sponge. Like you'll see that glob that you put on there and smooth out. Wipes it right right off when you do this. Get it down, pop it up right away, or see now this one's starting to pull the paper. Got to get them up right away. Okay, and then um, you get them in soapy water right away and you're good to go. I, the other thing I found is it actually washes off really easily. So I guess I'll get these over where I can get them into some water. Huh. What you doing? You have me sitting under my feet. So now we're going to have to let this dry. So I'm going to get it out of the way because it works like stickles. I put my fingers in it. So I get that. Okay. So now I think what we'll do first is we'll make the cover of the book because I had to, yeah, just soapy water, you know, like uh, just soap. I don't know. I didn't, like I said, I didn't read it. <laughs> it probably says something. Let me see if it says anything. <sighs> Pre-test. Apply adhesive, let dry until crystal clear, then use the deco foil. 
non-toxic, acid-free. Doesn't tell you how to take it off a stamp, but uh, yeah. You know, you can actually put that on fabric too, and you can wash it in cold water and tumble. What did it say? That was interesting. Just do not tumble dry and do not iron. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so I think that's what we'll do is let's do the cover. Oh, so here's the album. Here's a little album we're making. And the reason I'm going to start with that is I have to clamp these corners in order to get them to dry. So that way we can kind of clamp our corners and we can get that dry while, while we're working on everything else. Make sense? So what I did, Johnny, you'd be so proud of me. I like pre-cut a bunch of stuff. Have my I have my fabric, and I have my chipboard covers. And I'm going to give you the measurements. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. This fits. <laughs> but the Tim Holtz cabinet cards are. I got the measurements right here. They're three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So what I did was I cut the covers exactly the same size because I know, I know these fit inside the glove. So I cut them exactly the same size and by the time you get the padding around it, the covers will be slightly bigger and it'll look fine. So the spine is a half inch, it's not very wide. And then the pages, when I get to the pages, I'll give you those measurements too, I have those. They're a little bit bigger and there's eighths. Just warning you. So I don't have batting. So I am using dry baby wipes <laughs> and they worked fine. So let's get a piece of this cut. And like I said, this was from a dress at a thrift store and I loved it because it's velveteen and it has this beautiful gold thread in it. So we're going to use it. I should really look for a nice spot though, huh? Because that other one I didn't get a lot. This is pretty. And you want about a half, half inch all the way around when you cut this. So I'm leaving my D in the middle of the in the middle of this thing because I'm, you know, I don't want to, we're going to have a, we're going to have a center. I don't want to go off camera. So looks like we're going to going to be I'm probably going to be trimming this because see there's a lot over there. And that's okay. Alrighty. So what I did was I put batting, oh, the cards, these little cabinet cards, have a slight tiny little rounded corner. So if you've got the corner chomper that does the 1 8 inch, it's this one with the yellow, it matches it perfectly. So that's what I used. So I'm going to just um, do my, just the two corners on the outside. So there's little rounded corners. This is medium weight chipboard, by the way. So yeah. I keep losing my spine. <laughs> keep losing my spine. Little skinny spine. So yeah, that's gonna look good. Okay. So then what I did was I took my baby wipes. <clears throat> and I did like four, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do like Ugh, kind of worried about doing even two. Let me see. Let 
I think two is okay. I think two might be the way to go. Okay. And these are cut in half because these are the ones that are in the uh, princess phone. <laughs> so I had to cut them in half. So then what I did was I used some Fabri-Tac to just glue this down. And because I have a crooked edge there, I am lining up my straight edges so that I have a nice straight edge when I go to wrap this. I am going to trim this too. I already have some in there, so I'm just going to do just a, a tad, just to tack it down. You don't really, it doesn't have to have layer after layer of glue on it, but you do kind of want it to hold steady while you're putting your cover on. And none of this is going to show, by the way, these rough edges. They don't show once you get that velveteen on. So I'm just going to trim it. Here we go again. It's not even an hour. I'm already out of the camera. Woo! Okay. And I actually do the spine as well. So do I need more of these? No, oh, no, here they are. Make sure they're going the right way. Yeah, I'm using baby wipes as batting because I have no batting. <laughs> I had no time to get me. It was so funny. I'm told mom, I'm like, can we go get batting while I'm here? But we never did. We were only there. It was so fast. And then I was like, hey, wait a minute. I have batting. Nice thing about baby wipes is you can actually control the thickness. Like you don't have to say, oh darn, I don't have the right, I don't have the right. And again, I'm just doing enough to tack down that top layer. I'm not gluing it like crazy. This is just a half. So I might need to get another one. Oh, here we go. Okay, well, we may be piecing that. That's all right. Not a problem. So I'm going to trim this one up. You know, you don't even have to do the glove. You know me with my altered stuff. I just love, love altering things. But I mean, just this album is just the cutest gift, and they really work up fast. Now, you can make your own cabinet cards. If you've got punches, uh, you can get you can get a look like that. You know, don't don't let that stop you. Don't let anything stop you from trying from making something. You'll come up with a way to do it. So, for some reason, I don't seem to have a whole baby wipe. I'll cut off pieces of baby wipe. Let me see if I can grab one. <laughs> what? Gabby's by the trash can. Now, I think I'll just piece this. We'll just piece it. No big deal. If I worried about every little thing, I'd make myself crazy, and then it wouldn't be fun. Would it? It wouldn't be fun. And I'm just going to butt that right up against it and it won't show. Okay. Yay. Trim this down. Just 
do it again. Another couple layers, just a little bit here and there to tack it down. It does stick to stuff. It sure does stick. Stick and trim, I say. <laughs> Maybe you should be surprised by that comment. Okay, I'm just trimming it up. So this is the little spine. I can kind of see the chat you guys just so you know but it's a little bit later because I can't get to the bottom so if I make a comment it'll probably be you know 15 minutes after you've written it <laughs> but that's okay because some people some people haven't have been having problems with chat so okay so everything's covered so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our fabric. Oh, so pretty. I want this on the front, I think. I'm thinking. So I'm going to start from this end. And of course, at this point, you can flip everything around every which way, right? So. You're going to flip it so obviously batting's down. Your rounded corners, because one side's flat because that's where your spine goes. So your rounded corners are on the end. And then I just want to make sure I've got plenty of room. Plenty of room. Plenty. And then we're going to glue this down. And glue the batting side. I don't know how much of this you really even need, to be honest with you, because you're wrapping it and gluing it, you know? So, put that down. I'm gluing. Johnny, you're gonna love this. I actually channeled Christopher Lowell when I did this, because I had to do his rounded corners and I am leaving, just so you know how much space I'm leaving in there, I'm leaving the width of the chipboard. So whatever chipboard you have, you know, you just kind of pop it in there. And if it fits, you know you're good. You want those even. So I think I said I was using Fabri-Tac, which works great for this application. Again, rounded corners facing out, batting face down, line it up, good to go. So I'm probably just going to trim this up a little. Gonna need about, like I said, about a half inch. It this stuff stretches, so I'm not that worried about it. You don't want it too bulky, so but you want enough so that when you wrap this and then you put your book inside, you know you want all those edges covered. So you wanna you want something there. Oop, but I got that corner. I think that other side's pretty good. And then this one will just. And again, these pieces are, I say, three and a half by four and a half. Yikes! <laughs> it's catching me right on the corner. Okay, let me get my scraps out of the way. Oh, yeah, babe. How stinking cute. Okay. 
so now I just put the I put the glue here I did it right on the chipboard all around the edges and just get some of this all Oh, the yibbies at my feet. One thing I did find, just so you know, you guys, is some of this glue. Now, the Fabri-Tac, I don't think, did this. But I was using another glue, and it came through the Velveteen. So I don't know yet if that's going to happen with this, because I didn't use the Fabri-Tac. So I'm pulling it around. Let me see if it grips, if I have to hold it. I guess they're going to... It's gripping well. It's gripping very well. Nice. Nice. So what I did was I did all four sides and then I did the corners. And I'm pulling it fairly snug. I'm not it's not loosely wrapped. It's fairly snug, but it's not super tight either because, you know, I don't want it to pull. I want it to just sit nicely. I'm just going to let that sit for just a second to firm up just a tad. Then we'll do the corners. Yay! So, and you'll see this book is all made in one piece. So we're going to take the whole thing. We, do, we put these liner pages into, and then the whole thing just gets glued right into the cover. It's really easy. So I'm going to go ahead and do a corner. The way I'm going to do the corners is I am going to kind of pleat them. So basically, see how this looks? Like it's kind of sticking up. You can see it there, kind of sticking up. I'm just going to flatten it down. I'm going to glue in there, and I'm going to do it like a pleated corner, and just it'll hold down just like that. We're going to do them all like that. So it'll be pleated with two sides, and it'll make a nice round corner. And if there's excess, you know, you just cut it off. So I may cut off that point just because I think it's going to create too much. And I might pull this up a little. So what I did was I pulled it up just a tad in the middle of the corner and I stuck a bead of glue in there. Then I stuck a bead right there on either side of the pleat. And I'm getting threads right now so you don't get to really see what I'm doing. But that's not where you put the glue. It was way over there. Just got a thread. And then you pinch it and push it down. And I'll show you as soon as, as soon as I can before it, I don't want it to pop back up. Okay, see? Just pinch it like a little pleat. There's your two folds. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp that with the lighter clamps. These are like hair clips. I don't want to use anything too heavy because it'll press into the velveteen. So, and I'm just going to work my way around. Same thing. Then what you can do too is to make sure you've got it right. Just look on the other side. You should have a nice rounded corner without any like points. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these.
zhijing from the other side. Pull them tight. You want that tight too. I don't know if I told you that. You want it pretty snug. And we're going to clamp. So, I only have two of those clamps. <laughs> so, I'll have to let this dry for a second. But, is it adorbs or what? It's adorbs, I'm telling you. Okay. So while that's dry, while my two little clamps are drying, I think what I'll do is I'll grab the frame. Jonna knows what these are called, the Tim Holtz metal photo frames. Something, something frame. And I'm going to grab a picture off of one of these pieces of paper up from the line because they're so cute. Oh, let me see if I had one. This little girl's really cute. Let's see if we can get her to look good in there. Yeah, I didn't really want the postage stamp. We'll do her like that. That's cute. Okay, cut her up. Actually, I'll use that postage stamp. I'm going to, um, I'll just cut it out from another page. I'm going to decorate and I'm going to do as much of this as, you know, we all feel like doing today. I'm just going to hang out and see because the project it goes together pretty quickly. So, you know, we can kind of, we can probably spend some time embellishing. And you know me, do I measure? going to cut it down just a bit too so that there's some room back there for the, the glue and the metal to kind of, oh she's really sweet. Okay. So what I did for this one is I used um, Beacon, one, three in one. <laughs> You know I'm not going to get through a show without my three-in-one, right? You know that. And it held great to the metal frame. It really did. So I thank you to Jamie Doherty for telling me about this. She told me this a long time ago. So I'm putting glue on the top and gluing it, of course, to the back of the... And I really just did it in the corners. You don't, you don't need a whole lot of glue. I didn't want it to show. And I didn't, you know, kind of want it everywhere. So uh, maybe a dot on each side, one in the middle. So maybe just three dots on each side, or one in the corner and one on the end. Get her so she looks pretty. Stick her down. She's sweet. Oh, Matt Wife, you said your prom is next weekend? Oh, you know, this would make the cutest prom memento, wouldn't it? I don't know if they wear gloves anymore, but it would still be cute. Or, you know, if you had your mother, you know, what if you find a glove in a box somewhere and it doesn't have a pair, you know, a grandmother, mother, something like that. It would just be such a sweet memento. So I, because we're using gold and this is kind of a pewter color, I decided to put some, this is antique gold, um, gilder's paste on it. You can use paint, you can use really anything you want, but I happen to have this. And it worked great. So I'm just going to rub it lightly over, over the metal. And it 
really looks nice. You could use your paint, you know, the uh, Tim Holtz paint, but I used up all my gold <laughs> on that Italy project. I need to get some more. I love that paint. I told John after I got the uh, Tim Holtz, the distress paint, I said, I'm getting rid of all my paint. I'm just using this forever. She's like, no, you're going to need it. We're going to need it for classes and stuff. I'm like, fine, I'll pack it all up. Drive it down to your house. Because <laughs> I love the distress paint because um, it paints anything. You know, you can pop it right over anything. And I don't like to have to figure out what goes with what. Oop, it's not going to affect that I keep dropping this thing. So see, just a little bit of gold. So we're just going to let this sit and get dry. Okay, that's that. So let me see how my corners are doing with these clips so I can get the other corners done. Boy, I don't know if this is going to fit either. I may have to try to shove this in that glove and see if it works before I get too far. <gasps> oh gosh. Yeah, I think these two corners are pretty good. Pretty good and clamped down. Although this is popping up just a bit, and even though the background uh, paper will hold it, I just want to get just a bead of glue in there and get it, get it down. It always looks better if you can get those splatter, you know? Okay. So again, I'm going to pull this up just a bit and get some, get that corner exposed. A little bit of glue. Glue here, just a touch. Glue there, just a touch. Woo! Pleat it. And push it down. And then look on the other side and make sure it looks good because that's that's really more important at this point than um, what it looks like here because it's going to be covered. So I see that I have a little bit of a, I'm going to pull this tighter. We're going to clamp that down. Okay. Almost done. I'm going to cut that point off too. You may find you have to do that. This is giving me. Everybody says Fabri-Tac stringy. I, I haven't had too many problems with it, but I am today, and I think it's because it's humid here right now. I'm gonna check it. Looking good. Clamp it. Okay. And we'll just let those two go for a minute. Oh, look at how pretty that's going to be. Woohoo! Really, really pretty. Okay, I'm sorry, but I have to stop and admire it sometimes. Stop and smell the roses. <laughs> okay, so to make the inside, I made this really easy course. That's what I do. Oh, here's the other thing I want to show you. If you don't have those frames, you can really pretty much use any kind of frame. Like I painted this one gold. This one's black. But you can pretty much use any, you know, any frame you want to go on it, as long as it's small. I think the black's a little dark, but as long as it's small like that. Use what you got. Use what you got. 
Okay, so now, gosh, I love how my little bow came out. I'm like so proud of it. Oh yeah, the Fabri-Tac, I know, but it's perfect for this velvet. So that's why we're using it. Okay, so let's see what you're gonna do for your pages is you are going to cut your two papers for the book. Isn't this pretty paper? And you're going to cut them the same size again as these cards plus three eighths of an inch. And here's where the eighths come in. So these are three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So it's four and a quarter tall. So you're going to do three and a quarter plus three eighths I did the math, three and five eighths. <laughs> okay, so these are three and five eighths wide by four and a quarter tall, and then you're scoring at three eighths. And the reason you're scoring at three eighths is so that, here's the little trick with these, it fits in this slot. Now, what you're gonna do if you use these cards is they have an opening at the top already. And then you're gonna slip a oh, I don't know, something narrow, a knife. It actually comes off with your finger, but what I wanna show you is where the fold is. So here's the front of the card, okay? And I'm holding it upside down, so let me hold it this way for you. Here's the front of the card. This has, this is thin paper. This is heavier cardstock on the back. This is flat. This is folded in and glued to this. So when you go to open that, Open it in such a way that you're coming in between that fold and this cardboard, okay? And that's how you're going to get that nice clean edge. It's going to look just like that when you slide it open. And that's what we're going to use for our hinge. So then what you're going to do, and I used glue, you can use score tape, is you're going to slide that right in to that seam. Now, I also have additional pages in my book. I have, I only have two, because I used three of the cabinet cards. So six come in a pack, two of three different designs. So I'll show you how we're gonna do this page too. Okay, so here's our end page. And you do two of those, one for the front, one for the back. Now, to do the pages for the inside of the book, this, I believe, is seven and a quarter. I'm just gonna verify that. My, um, my ruler broke. I have a million, I have like three Tim Holtz rulers. And this was like the last one I had, which of course, Artie Dar showed us how to use this to draw faces, and that's why I have it. Yeah, seven and a quarter. And it, it snapped in my bag when I was traveling. Seven and a quarter. You're going to fold it in half. You're going to score three eighths on each end. So it looks like that. Okay. Then what I did was I put, I'm trying to think of which way it's going to go. It's going to go this way. I put a little bite in it for the tag. And I used the I used a bigger punch and I made it a little bit shallower. I just kind of liked that look for this album. Okay. So it's gonna go like that. And then on this side, I took one of the scraps from cutting up my pages and I made those little tuck spots. So, I know. <laughs> He's right under. Huh? Gabby. Gabby's under the trash can. <sighs> okay. Sorry, bead girl. So what I did before was I liked the matching uh, papers for that. So let me go see which one that was. 
And I'll tell you what, I'm really loving the fact that there's so many of the same thing in here. Loving it. Anyway, I don't know. Oh, there's some. This is nice heavy paper too. And it's really nice to, to uh, work with. Enjoying it. Okay, so I don't know where my scraps are. So guess what? We're not using scraps. So for the tuck spots, I made them three and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just cutting it. I'm just doing it, eyeballing it. Because that's what I do. <laughs> so, um, you probably can't see me, but I'm just cutting my little strip for the tuck spot. And I decided to do matching paper because I thought it would be cute with that, what I'm calling my German scrap trim. Which is under here. Where'd I put that thing? Where'd I put that thing I showed you? That's well, here somewhere. But anyway, that little trim I'm going to put here. I kind of liked the fact that it sort of looked matching, and then that little trim just kind of went across. So that's why I'm using the matching paper. So there's one, and I'm going to do the other page too, real quick, while we're at it. So. So I can get my punch out of the way, I guess, probably. And I'm doing them, I think I'm making one face one way and one face the other way. So one will go, we'll have this tag piece here, and then the little pocket back here, and then this one will go the opposite. So it just adds a little bit of interest in the book. So to stick these down, I used my fine liner with the quick dry 3M Scotch quick dry in it. Add to the inside for pockets. No idea. <laughs> add what to the inside? You can add anything you want. Anything at all. Make it yours. I wanted to add a charm too. I think that'd be really pretty coming out of the binding. So. Get it even. So I'm just gluing that on there, the little tuck spot right there. And we're going to ink this too. So I'll let that dry and I'll do the other page real quick. Then I'll go on the hunt for my, my little trim I made. I'm doing all three sides like a pocket. These are so fun. I could see myself totally making a bunch of these. Seriously. Why wouldn't you?
again. I'll let it dry. Super cute. And we'll ink them. Oh, hey, Susan. Okay, so let me get these inked. I'm just inking all the edges. I'm folding it, inking that edge too. Not inking here. I'm not inking here because that's the hinge. So Let those sit for a sec. See how this is doing. Seems to be doing a okay. That really is cute. Okay, here's the moment of truth. <laughs> Here's the moment of truth if this album's going to really fit in the glove. What does this remind you of? <laughs> Who's trying to put on a glove? <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Yay! It's going to fit. Now keep in mind, it's all going to be decorated, right? So it's going to look like that. I'm so happy. <sighs> We're doing a pink one today, by the way. I don't know if I told you that. Okay, that is just super cute. Okay, cool. All right, so now I think I'll finish. Um, I don't know if this is completely, well, it's pretty stuck on there. Um, let's see, I got this, let's put the book together then. This, this, this. This and there should be a square one. And I had fun. I have to tell you, I had fun with that deco foil. Like, see, you can edge things with it. It's really fun. So you could do the bows like I did here. You could just do dots like I did here. I kept this one kind of simple. So super fun. And again, they're all opened the same way. I know I'm not much fun today because I don't have Jonna because she's not talking. So now I, <laughs> now I have to be focused on what I'm doing. <gasps> okay. So let, okay. So now the trick is find that trim I showed you how to make. Where'd I put that thing? Where'd I put that thing? Oh, here it is. Yay, found it. Okay. I might not have enough here, so I might have to make another one. which would be okay with you guys, right? Because then you could see it. So what I'm gonna do, see? So I have my little sparkly. So I'm gonna glue that. Now this is the hinge right here. So I'm just gonna butt it up against that hinge and just edge my little pocket. 
That's what we're going to do. It will be super cute. So let me cut that off, make it a little easier to glue. I actually like this one better. Okay. So what I did to make it easier, I just glued right along the edge of that tuck spot. I didn't try to glue on the lace piece. I just sort of did this with my fine liner. And then I stuck this down. And I stuck it down so that the pretty lacy part went above the tuck spot. Got it straight, straight as I could. Which you know for me. But hey. That looks pretty straight. We can always touch that back up if that didn't work out. And then um, I took a tag and just kind of stuck it in there to make sure that it was still open. Grab it. This one's a little big, but you get the idea. Just so I could put something in there. And then with the dry. Okay, so it looks like I am going to have to make another one. So I'm, I'm going to show you how I did it. We'll have to wait though. We won't be able to put it in the book right away because like I said, you got to wait for that stuff to, to dry. The glue to dry or you can put the metal on it. So cute. Now, when you get this done, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your glue, and I put glue in the fold, glue on the bottom, glue on this edge, so that it went like that when it was closed up. And you don't really need to put glue in that fold necessarily, but I did so it would kind of lay flat when I put it in the book. So I may as well do that while we're waiting for glue to dry. We may as well. I'm just sticking it right in the fold. And then all along the edges. And then I just kind of pinched it like that. And you want, of course, you want these to be even because that's your Part of your hinge and that's it let that dry so we've got two of those coming down the pike so I'm going right in the fold again all three sides right on that fold before you get to the score line so do you think you guys are going to make this it's not hard is it it's easy even if you were to punch your own cards with punches you can do it because you can fold the paper any way you want. So get that punch in there, you know, and then fold your page, right? Okay, so we're gonna let that one dry too. And we're pretty close to getting the book built. And then we're gonna have a drawing. Have these tags that we can use and we can make more tags and I just kind of cut things out of the paper to make the little tags I love that one Isn't that pretty that was so pretty I'm just gonna pull some 
you that so you can see. This was fun. I did some of the uh, deco foil. There's a key. See the key? I really love my auto thing. My auto color makes it unglossy, shiny. Then there's a tiny little butterfly. Key and a tiny little butterfly. So yeah, you can do it right on, you know, right on your tags and it's really fun. Or you can do them, you know, I did a few like this, like the bottle that I could just stick on a page. So I thought it was kind of fun too. That was fun. All right, so we've got a bunch of these little tags and then get my punches out of the way and we'll be good. Um, I don't want to ink these. These are my end papers. Oh, and for your end papers, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to punch with that 1 8, one eighth uh, corner chomper 2 to make it match when you line it. I'll grab that. And again, I'm doing the 1 8. When I get tired, I drop, spill, bump. <laughs> I broke my toe Sunday night. I had a crazy week because I had went to mom's, had to get up at four Monday morning to get on a plane, broke my toe Sunday night while I was packing in semi-darkness, <laughs> and then ended up having to wear sneakers and limping all the way to Norfolk, Virginia. But they were very nice and you know everyone has some kind of broken foot story so it was good okay so we only have to do the outside because these are our end papers and then I also I didn't I don't think I cut let me just check I don't remember cutting my end paper hinges. Yeah, I left that flat. I left that flat inside, but I did do the pages inside. I notched these just a little. So that means I went like that just a tad. Not a lot. That just helps them turn better. Okay. Sometimes when I get something done like this and it goes so quickly, I like I can't believe it and I think I'm forgetting something. Carrie! <laughs> Broke your big toe going up the stairs. Yeah, I smashed mine on the metal frame of my exercise bike. Do you want to know what the real secret is? The exercise bike's in parts under my bed. Because once I get, I have a walk-in closet and it's got my craft stuff in it right now. And once I get my craft stuff out of the closet and all de-stashed, I'm putting my exercise bike in there. I'm going to use it as a little exercise room. So <laughs> that's kind of what's going on here. I don't have a lot of space if you guys figure that out. So I thought that was pretty brilliant. Cause I don't want it out in the open. So, okay. So we're still going to need, I told you I would show you how to do that little edge. So let's do that. So what we're going to need for that is a piece of paper, a piece of cardstock, a piece of really anything. I just happen to have this here. So I'm going to use it and a punch. So I'm using this Martha Stewart one. I think it's called vintage lace. I don't remember. I think that's what it's called. And I'm just going to punch a strip. This paper is so nice. It's like, like cardstock. Love it. I love it.
Oops. What did I do there? <laughs> Oops. Let me see if I have enough, despite the fact that I went AWOL. Yes, I do. Okay. Kind of got off there. And then what I did for this, I just, um, I just trimmed it off, you know, just at the bottom of that lace. I cut the strips off. So hopefully we can go back and we can, we'll be able to do this. put the metal on it and give it enough time to dry and see if it'll work for the time we're going to allot. Okay, so then what I did was I took a plastic bag, which just, that worked for me. And I laid it down. And then I took my glue. Let me get this back on here so it doesn't dry out. I glue all over my hands. Whoops. Took my deco glue. And I just, because you can draw with this. You can, like I showed you, you can stamp. You can cover things, which is what we're going to do right now. It's really fun. just want to wipe off some of the glue I got on it. So all I'm going to do is just coat this with this stuff. If you coat it thickly, you get kind of a really metallic, thick bead of the metal. If you coat it thinly, you get what looks more like, you know, German scrap, be thinner. And so this is where they say to practice because, yeah. I got all different kinds of stuff when I was doing this. And the other thing is too, you know, sometimes it's a little hard to make sure that it's completely coated and it really just depends on how perfect you want it to be. I'm just, I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any empty spaces. I don't know, I might end up having some. But, okay. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. And I'm wondering if the one that I did before is ready. Let's see, it has to dry clear. That might be ready. We could try it. I'm willing to sacrifice one just to see. <laughs> we could give it a whirl. We can bring the sheet that I had out. Because there's still a little bit on here. So my heart is right here. Now I can see that I'm gonna I'm gonna have to re I'm gonna have to put it on again because I see a spot where see it's blank right there. It already was used. You can feel it. You'll feel bumps under your finger. Let me see if I can show you what that's gonna look like. And it sticks. And you'll see the shape under there. Uh, let's try and see if I can get it up there. See those little bumps right, right there? See that? Almost looks like a heart. That's kind of how it's going to look when you do it. You push it down, rub it on, like a rub on, about that, 
about that amount of pressure. And then pull it up. Ooh, pretty. So there's my little heart. Oops. I love how this adjusts because it doesn't like sparkly. What the heck? Okay, there. Isn't that purred? There's the heart. I'm going to cut that little thing out and use it. Let's see what else we got. We got, I did stick a couple other things down, didn't I? Let me grab my new sheet. Oh, I cut my paper. I cut my paper, do you know why? Because there's like five copies of the same paper in here. So that's, that's what I was saying in the beginning. It's uh, what I love about this paper stack. At first you think there isn't a whole lot of variety, but there is because it's all double-sided. But look, if you need to use something and you want that fairy, you got, you got plenty. So I'm really, I have to say, I'm really enjoying using this. Super, super enjoying using it. Um, I wanted to grab. Okay. I thought there were two sheets in here, but I think there's more than that. Five. There's five sheets. There's five sheets in here. Yay. So I'm going to grab another one. They're all kind of rolled together, though. But they roll back in pretty easily. Back into the tube. Okay. The biggest problem I had... Oh, look, I pulled two out. <laughs> the biggest problem I had was when I started, I kept forgetting to put it gold face up. That was not good. Okay, now I know I have one because they dry clear. I know I had one right there. Okay, I have one, one kind of right there. That was just, it's like a little label right there. I'm going to do it upside down because I can't get under the camera. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty. I'm going to cut them out and collage them. That's what I'm doing. But you could do it right on the page. I mean, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. I think it's just going to be fun to mix them as a collage. Oh, this was the feather. Okay. Oh yeah, pretty. Maybe I didn't get enough. I, I might not have gotten enough ink on this though. Let me show you my other feather. You got to get enough on there or it won't show up. But you can put it back down, you know. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Let's see if you can see it. Feather. Sparkly. All I did for the glue, Cheryl, is I swept a cosmetic sponge of the glue on the top of the stamp. That's all I did. Kind of like frosting a cake, just a pretty thin layer. Where's my sponge that I used? And what I did was I just um, 
put the glue on like this. I'll show you. And I, like I said, I don't know what the right technique is. This is how I did it. <laughs> then I took the flat side of this um, bottle and I smoothed it out like frosting, just like frosting. Like that. I don't know if you can see it. Should be a little shiny. But anyway, it's flat. And then I um, put it on the stamp. Here, we can do the bottle, and I'll come back to the bottle later. And then I just brushed it across. You don't want to brush too much because you do want, it'll brush the glue right off. So. You get it on, just get it on the top of the stamp. Push it down. Make sure there's nothing right there. Pick it up right away so it doesn't pull up the paper. And you can look at it. See, like I see that I've got the whole image there, it looks like. Then you let it dry for at least a half hour, but an hour is better. Now these are very delicate stamps, these Prima ones, the, these designs are very delicate. So you could try other stamps too and see what kind of look you get. I just thought these were so pretty and they kind of went with that Victorian foil look, you know? So that's why I decided to do it with this, with this set. So we're just gonna let that dry and we'll keep going on. Might be able to build our book right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the inside, then I'm just going to attach it right to this. Easy peasy. So decide which cabinet card you want in the front. I like that one. I think I'm so in love with my bows. You know I gotta do it. You know I gotta do it. Okay. And then what I did was I put glue here and get your next page ready because that's going in that hinge too. Because what you're gonna do is inside this hinge in this card is you're gonna do your first, your page and your facing, your book, what's this called? Book leaflet page, whatever this one's called. Flyleaf, that's what it's called. So these are both going in. I'm going to try to show you what I'm talking about here before I glue it. Okay. So those are both going to go in that slot. Okay. Which was funny because that's how I planned to do it. And then when the reality hit and I actually started doing this, I was like, ah, I had to pull, <laughs> I had to pull it apart because I forgot. Okay. So I'm gluing both sides. Of this hinge. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this to this first. Okay, here's a good idea. I'm going to stick these two together first, and then I'm going to put this on it. So let's get some glue on the side of the hinge. I'm gonna slide this on. Pretty, pretty. So that's the first part of our book right there. 
to get that folded better. Just need to fold it a little bit back and forth. That looks so good. Looks really good. Cool. Okay, and onward and upward, right? So we're going to create that next hinge by putting th this page together with this one. Cabinet card will get slipped on if I use a square one. So the square's in between the two ovals, just like that. Yeah, I'm using the fine liner. I know, and it's 20 gauge. Don't use these. Use the yellow ones. They're 18. I thought I ordered 18 and I, I got these and they work fine. It's just, it's a very, very fine tip. But I had the yellow one and I had glossy accents in it. And one day I went to take the top off and it pulled this tube out with it. And that was the end of that. These, this one's been holding up pretty well. Okay, so I'm just going to glue my hinges together. But yeah, if you use the yellow, the, um, the 18, it's faster. <laughs> but this was good for that lacy stuff. I should get this cover out of here while I'm doing this. So again, butting our hinges up, making sure they look pretty even. Let it dry for just a sec. Quick sec. If you have to take this over to the other side to uh, line it up, do so. That's what I'm doing right now because I didn't like didn't like how it was lining up from here. I just flipped it over, checked it. Still don't like that fold right there. There we go. Yeah, we go. Okay. Got our little hinge. And put the cabinet card on. And you could actually hinge your pages all together and then put your cabinet cards in the middle too. I mean, it doesn't really matter how you do it. I'm just kind of working my way across, so. And before the glue dries, I'm kind of Holding my pages, make sure everything's going to look good, right? Want it to look good. Want your hinges to look good. Check all the sides. Make sure your pages can open. This doesn't look straight to me. better. You know, you might, and you might want to let them dry a little bit in between. Um, that's certainly a little easier or easier to work with if you do that. Okay, so we got that one on. Now we're going to do the last one and we're going to do the end paper. Excuse me. So we'll get these two stuck on together. Slippery. 
you want that to look good because that's your that's getting attached to the book so make sure that's nice and even vertically too okay I'm gonna let that sit for just a second hey Vaughn I am in the zone I'm sorry we're almost done I don't know I did have problems with a couple of these bottles oh my gosh okay here's the other crazy thing on my glossy accents so the two bottles I had issues with were glossy accents just in case that's the issue I don't know but here's and I was loving it and I was using it loved it so I go to use it last night I pull the top off and the tube's gone the metal tube it's gone I think it fell into the bottle um and I'll, by metal tube I mean yeah I'll show the glove thanks Gary that tube that metal pin thing the tube thing yeah I think it fell into the bottle <laughs> I haven't tried to go fishing for it yet though I don't know I may end up putting baby bottles nipples on my beak I tried it on one and I liked it I think it's on my crafters pick glue um, I like that solution when you have these larger bottles so I may try it on the on my other ones. Oh yeah, and you know something important like make sure you don't put a page in upside down. <gasps> I didn't, but I was like, oh. I'm gonna slide that on. Oh, so cute, you guys. I'm sorry, giddy with happiness. <laughs> so stinking cute. Jonna just laughs at me because I think I told you this story about how I make projects in theory. Meaning I make them in my head first. <laughs> so I had done one project in here and she's like, is it done? Oh, I think it was the pretty princess pillow. <laughs> oh God. Where I'm trying to get the fabric and trying to figure out, you know, how to, whether the fabric is going to work attached to the paper with medium and whether it's still going to be puffy enough, you know, to look like a pillow. And I'm working all this stuff out and I'm trying to figure out the design in my head. And so John is like, well, have you made it yet? <laughs> I'm like, well, in theory, Darcy, you can't make projects in theory. You have to actually make them. <laughs> You're not going to know if it works or not until you actually make it. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Oh, Vaughn, you're so sweet. Vaughn says the pretty princess pillow is so fabulous because she won that. <laughs> okay, wait, Cheryl's asking me a question. No, I know. I know it looks like it's still in the cap. It's not. Look, this is the actual pin. I tested it because I said the same thing. I go, oh, maybe it got stuck like my other one, right? So I took my working bottle and I go, oh, well, we can test that. If this has a hole in it, this will work, right? And sure enough, it works just like any, like the regular caps on any other thing. <gasps> Ooh, you know what? It goes right in. So, but this is weird. There's something in there. Okay, I think you're right. I think there's some issue. <laughs> yeah, or it's upside down? Because this does go into the tube. But it's not going all the way. It's not going all the way, guys. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm fine line challenged. It's entirely possible. Yeah, I don't, I don't know you guys. I'll mess with it later, but it was certainly a mystery. Yeah, because if that was the tube, it wouldn't fit, 
putting it in the tube here. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm the only one that has these issues, though. I know that for a fact. So I'm bending these while the glue is slightly wet so that I can kind of get them to sort of be flexible. So they bend and everything's cool and works together. I am going to let this dry though, because this paper, you know, paper will get flimsy while that glue's wet and I don't want anything to break or come apart. So I'm going to let this dry. But the beauty of this design, if I may say so myself, and I'm not saying I'm the only one that's ever done this, but what I love about putting my end papers in first, like this, is then I can just glue the whole stinking thing in the book. See? And then I'm done. <laughs> that isn't the best idea ever. I don't know what is. <laughs> this looks thick though, you guys. I don't know if this is going to fit in the glove again. We're going to have to do a glove experiment. You're going to get three pages in your book that doesn't fit. No, it's fitting. See? Okay, so that was the trick. That was the trick then, is I just made the cover too puffy. See, it's fitting. It's supposed to pull a little bit because, you know, it's a glove. It's not going to hold a whole big book. But I really wanted to use this size because you get smaller and you start having to do all kinds of things with your photos, and this will handle wallet, you know? Oh, thanks, AJ. Yeah, I don't know, MetWife. Oh, thanks, Via. Via Vaughn. Okay, here's the glove. Somebody wanted to see the glove. So what I did with the glove, okay, sometimes, like I said, it is just fun to put flowers on things. <laughs> so here's the glove. It's white. I sprayed it with some cotton candy bloom spray. We may use blue on the pink one. We'll see. I have the purple. I'll show you the colors I used, but they're, the purple's very dark. And I wasn't sure I liked it on the glove. I just thought maybe it was a little too much. So what I did with it was I um, layered some lace. We're going to work on this next. I'm probably going to take a break though real quick. And we're going to do a drawing for that deco foil. And then I, I just sprayed a little bit. And I didn't do a whole lot on the back. I kind of wanted to keep it flat on the back so that the idea is that if the book fits, <laughs> you lay this down, you know, like on a stack of old books or you can hang it, you know, it's just kind of sweet. Jonna, you can put candy in it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Carrie, would that be stinking gorgeous or what? If you went to ask somebody, like uh, get engaged, ask somebody to marry you, yeah, put, wrap this up and put a ring, put the ring on the glove. Because the other thing you can do, guys, that I wanted to tell you, because when I started running into trouble with the thickness of this book, I was just like, eep, what am I going to do? You could make this as a double photo frame, meaning... All you'd have to do is take one of these cards, right? And you'd have one on this side, line it with paper, have one on this side, and then have, you know, have one on this side. And you could put the couple, happy couple inside. So that's another idea. You don't have to do a whole album, especially if you're trying to fit it in this glove. <laughs> Okay, so let me get, I want to get my pretty cover on here too. I think we're ready to glue this all up. So let's glue it all up. This is going to be a stretch too because it's a little thick, but it's too pretty to leave off. So then all I did here was I took my, I think I, went, I, think I used Fabri-Tac again. Now, what, here on the hinge, I, I did put glue on the hinge. I didn't put a lot of glue on it and I kind of let it do its own thing. I wasn't so worried about the hinge sticking in the middle of this book because what was going to hold the book together were 
these end papers. So I'm going to glue the papers. And I found it easier, you guys, to glue the actual paper. I just did. Because then what you, you'll see what I do. I kind of, I'll kind of zhuzh it. Yeah, I make a lot of projects in theory, but you know why? And then I get myself in trouble. And then I call Jonna and cry like on Thursdays before the show. This one I didn't though, Jonna. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> Only because I love mixing it up. I like to mix my materials. And sometimes if you don't know the properties of those materials, you can get yourself in trouble. So... So now what I'm doing is I'm pushing this into the book. Get my glue out of the way. And I'm attaching this paper down. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it's just gorgeous. And where this lands is where it's gonna land. But the nice thing about the glue is you can kind of move it around and you can straighten it. So if you don't like, if it doesn't look even to you, you know. You can kind of fix it, but this actually looks pretty good. And then depending on, you know, if I have some open areas where there wasn't glue or the glue didn't stick, I'll go back and I'll go back and fix that. It's not a problem. So I'm just sort of lining it up a little and that's it. I mean, how quick and easy is this? Oh my gosh, you guys, I got, I'm making a mini announcement because I don't have anything to show you yet, but I will be doing, I will be doing a quick video when the stuff comes in. I got the prizes. I ordered the prizes for the stick it down challenge and I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited. I went a little overboard, but we might make this an annual event. So I want the prizes to be good. And if I only have to do it once a year, I'm cool with that. They're really they're really nice. I want one. <laughs> Thanks, Jean. I know you could make these for your whole family. You could. There's, it's so easy. You could do it with the bigger ones too, the bigger cards if you want to use these or you make your own. I know. I'm kind of in love with it. Just saying. Okay, so I'm going to put this on because we're going to have to let all this dry while we're doing the glove. So now I'm using three and one on this metal piece and I found that it held well. If you find that it doesn't hold for you, because I haven't done this long enough yet. Um, I haven't had it stuck on there very long yet, so I don't know. Um, use quick grip or E6000, but right now this seems to be working just great. So right in the middle. Oh my goodness. This is so cute. Okay, I've got to stop saying stuff like that. It's so bad. Isn't that rude? So rude. I think that's kind of in the middle. It's stuck. It's going to stay there. At least it's even. Oh, that would be so cute. Cheryl said you could make one for a guy. You could do a work glove. Decorate with gears and stuff. I love that idea. Thanks, Star. Thank you. Yeah, it's very, I know, it's very girly. Every once in a while, I get my shabby chic on. I've never been, I have to say, I've never been like a, I love the Prima look because I think it's a very sophisticated look. But I can't say that I'm into shabby chic per se, but I do love just that whole girly feminine thing because I don't do it very often, you know? You don't, I don't do it very often. It's fun. So we're going to do this next. And I'm going to, let's do a quick drawing because I'm at two and a half hours, I think, believe it or not. So let me go get my bingo thing. Put this away.
and I'm going to need help. Carrie, do you mind helping me with the number, um, the drawing or anyone else? I know Carrie says she's not good with numbers, but <laughs> if somebody could look, Jean, someone, and help me because, um, you know, John is yard sailing. I don't know. She might be around, but I'm going to go ahead. And what you're going to be getting for this prize is some of the glue, the Thermoed Deco Foil Glue, Thermoed, some of the rose gold deco foil there's five sheets in here and then i have a little what i call a rag bag random act of goodies i'm just gonna mail that too so let's get let me get my bingo thing Okay, so you know the rules. The rules are you're going to pick a number. Let's see how many people we have here. How many people do we have, guys? Can you tell me? I don't see it. How come I don't see it on here? Jonna, here, lizard, lizard, lizard. Jonna, how many people are here? Okay, great. Pick a number between 48. Okay, so we'll pick a number between one and 48. I'm supposed to announce what? What am I supposed to announce? I didn't say go. You're gonna have to stop. I'm not listening to you guys. Not listening. Not listening. You're all gonna get a chance to do it again though, okay? <laughs> Wait till I say go. Number between one and 48. You're all gonna start over, okay? We're gonna all pretend nobody did that. I'm giving it a minute in case you have a lag. One and 48. One number only, person who comes closest without going over. Got it, Jonna. Okay. Person who comes closest without going over will win that prize. Okay. Give me two seconds. Okay. Yay. There you go. You guys are awesome. I have not played with this foil in my art journal, but I can't wait. I think it's going to be awesome. Because <laughs> you can write, and then you can do that foil. My whole journal is going to be full of it. Oh, no. Jonna, you're on your phone. Okay, it looks like everybody's done. Okay, everyone's done. So let me do the number here on the thingy. Okay, it was it was 60, so I have to do it again. Let me I gotta pull up so I can see. 60. Okay, the winner is 20. 20. Who got 19 or below or 20? Can someone look for me and tell me who got 20? Yeah, I know. Yay for 20, whoever. Let me go up. Stop, stop, stop. Go, go, go. Okay, it looks like it might be B3 with 19. I don't know. Let me see. 18, 19. Do 
Am I right? Is it Brenda? Okay. I don't know. I don't see a 20. Not not since I typed in go. I can't I can't go back and look at those. That doesn't count. I, I decided it was fair to make you all start over. Okay, cool. Yay, Brenda. Winner, winner, Brenda Dinner. <laughs> okay. I think I've sent you something before, right? I have your address. I think I do. Yay! Oh, you're gonna have so much fun. You're gonna have so much fun. This stuff is the coolest stuff ever. And this glue goes a long way. So you may even want to buy more of these for yourself. They're like five bucks, different colors. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to stop this recording. It'll be part one and um, we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs>